Hey guys, welcome back. Orbom here, bringing you the promised rematch of Light March versus Buzzbowl Ninetales. Uh, this is actually going to be a little bit different though from our first video. Uh, this is going to be our own personal builds, uh, my version, uh, but all but all based off of the decks that did well at the recent uh, championship tournament. So on the left you have me, and on the right you have Nelson. He's playing um, he's playing Buzzwell. Nine Tails with Lycan Rock. So we're gonna get right into this. Don't forget to drop a like on the video too, as well as check out our sponsors here at Guardians Gaming for supporting us and all that we do here on the channel. Now, I made a couple changes. I made I made a couple changes that'll help me be a little bit more consistent. Uh, the opening hand seems not too bad. We get we get a guaranteed. We have Lele, so we can always get um, Professor Elm, and we have a DC for not to. We have not to in hand, and we have an Elm in hand too, so we can actually use two Elms in a row. So this opening hand should be good. So I kind of focused this deck a little bit more on speed and a little bit more on consistency so I wouldn't feel stuck all the time. But he led with Vulpix here, which is good for him, but I get to go first. I have the Trumpbeak so I can use my ability real quick. Uh, I know the thing is blocking off the edge, but no big deal there. I'm going to use Elm, just give myself a couple of hop-ups. Now, in this game, do keep in mind that we are using the 40 HP hop-ups. I just didn't have the time to print them. Um, so this is going to be my list. So this list plays the 40 HP hop ups. And the reason why we're doing this rematch is because we did make a couple of mistakes in the first video. The first video, we forgot about resistance and a couple of uh, a couple of attacks, which should matter a little bit. So we're going to remember everything this time. So no mistakes in this video. I do apologize about, about, about that, guys. I didn't mean for there to be so many mistakes. We're just really tired whenever we record. Even now, it's going to be late. But hopefully, there's no issues in this video either. I'm going to go ahead and grab three hop -ups. Just figured I'd grab all four of them. If I grabbed all four, that means I probably have at least three in the... At least three skip looms in the deck and three jump luffs. So this is good for me. Because next turn, I can just bench a, uh, bench a Lele to get myself another Faba... Or Faba. Another um, Professor Elm here. And I can put down a Natu. Uh, I don't really see a reason to attach DC because I can just retreat into a jump bluff. I use jump bluff to retreat next turn. I'm going to play down my Lele. The only thing that sucks about this is I don't have bench space for a, for a, what's it called? Uh, for an Oranguru, which this deck is playing to Oranguru, uh, which I find to be really, really useful. <laughs> I've had, I've had multiple games now where I've had uh, to turn to 180 damage, which is kind of huge. Especially in my testing, because I was testing this deck versus Pacephalon and it was really, really good. I was pretty... Pretty like 60 40 in favor for Lost March, so that's pretty good. Uh, he does get the Brooklet. Brooklet does not help me anymore because I did take out my Vulpix. I tried to take out Pokemon that just had a hard time retreating. Uh, I wanted to minimize that a little bit. And Vulpix, as nice as it was to get your Pokemon, it didn't really help the speed factor of like attacking right away. So I took out the Vulpix. He's gonna use Brooklet Hill to get a Buzzwell though. <clears throat> Which is good. This this matchup should be in favor of Lost March because um, because now that we're accounting for resistance, it's a little bit harder for him to take easy knockouts. Here, if he gets in the skateboard, he will be able to knock out my uh, Hobbit anyways because Beast Energy put puts him puts him in range of knockout. Exactly. Because remember, these are 40 HP, 40 HP dudes. Um, also, answer the comment question today. I think we're going to be start giving out a couple Lost March codes now, so don't forget to drop a like on the video and answer a comment question today for a chance to win a couple Lost March codes. Because we're going to be start doing, I think we're going to start doing that in all of our videos. Now that Lost March codes are out there, he's going to get another Buzzle, and he's not going to be able to attack this turn, which is good for me because that's like the dream turn. It means I get a chance to get out. Um, gives me a chance to get out potentially all four Jump Luffs if I have them on the deck. But he's going to go in it, go ahead and use. Um, Beacon here to grab himself. I'd grab a Nine Tails, I, I personally, but Lele works too if he doesn't have a draw supporter. Because he can always use Brooklet to grab the other fighting type he might need. Anyways, let's see. Um, uh, what can we do here? We have another Trump Beak, so we can use the ability real quick. So we find and doesn't find anything, so that's fine. And let's see. We have Lele here. We can play the Lele down to get ourselves the other Elm. And that can get us three skip blooms, which is really, really powerful. But yeah, so three skip blooms means there is six more Pokemon in the Lost Zone. Putting myself at, uh, what is that? Two, four, six, eight Pokemon in the Lost Zone, meaning we're already hitting 160 turn two. Uh, that's without using any Lost Mixers or anything like that. So we still have a chance to use a couple Lost Mixers. And if we like get another skip bloom, like through like Ultra Ball or something, then we're even then we're even in a better position because that means we get a like two more Pokemon in the Lost Zone. Doesn't look like it's going to be the case because of the way my hand is, but I will be able to take a knockout this turn with Natu, which is really good. If I find a Grass Energy, that's probably better because I do want to save my DCE attacks with Natu for the Buzzwolves because I'm already hitting 160, which means for the rest of this game, I'm set. Unless he's a, unless he starts attacking with Ninetales, then uh, I Oko everything with weakness based on the Pokemon I have on my board is really good. 
Um, but I'm gonna retreat into Nazi. Just start taking knockouts while I can, because once again, because he's a, I, I put that in discard pile by accident, guys. I will put it back on the board. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I have a choice band in hand too, in case that ever comes into play. Like if I put one more Pokemon in the Lost Zone, then I'll be able to knock out Nine Tails with the choice band, which is good. I see one more in the loss, but here he can attack me with Buzzwool. Buzzwool being annoying, uh, he can always soften up some of my Jump Puffs too, so that they're in range of Knockout. So uh, J Jet Punch is just an annoying attack to deal with. Oh, and I do want to apologize for this. <laughs> my camera has been glitching out lately, so we should be able to catch this soonish, I think. Um, oh man, I might have to edit this part out. Yeah, okay, there we go, we caught it. <laughs> Yeah, my camera was kind of whack lately. It's been glitching out and zooming in on its own, which is why uh, if you guys want to donate to the Orban Buys a New Camera Fund so we can do this more often. I haven't recorded any games at all yet since this issue. So I'm trying to record more games, but uh, my camera's been glitching out and been zooming in on its own. Uh, I believe it happens one more time in this video, but we always catch it, so it's okay. I, I have uh, my shout outs to my buddy Seabass, who's always been catching these issues. Uh, he's going to go ahead and Lily here, draw a couple cards. It uh, looks like he just benched a Vulpix, uh, maybe he got it off the beacon. I don't know what he did, to be honest. But attaching energy to Rockruff, he got a beacon. Uh, he he got um, he benched a Diancy, and he benched a Vulpix as well. So that's pretty good. So he's gonna take a knockout here, put 30 damage on a Jump Pluff on the bench. I decided to switch. Yeah, I, I have free retreat with that Jump Pluff, so I'm debating if I want to attack with the damage Jump Pluff or not. I don't think it, I don't think I should because he's still like Jet Punch won't knock it out. But here I do take a knockout thanks to Choice Band. I hit exactly 190, um, which is really really good. And uh, here I'm playing another another Elm, so that's three that's three Elms already. I can get the other Skip Bloom if I have the other Jump Pluff in deck. I guess we'll find out. But no, I just grab all three Natus. Uh, assuming he takes another knockout here, I can just bench him. So. I mean, what else am I gonna do, really? <laughs> I'm just chilling right now. I was hoping that I had another skip loom, I think, in my hand, and uh, there was no reason for me to play a draw supporter that turn. I might even have another energy in my hand, too. I do not, I just have two things. Okay, cool. Uh, so, no big deal there, no big deal there. I'm gonna take my knockout here. That's really good for me. I'm already ahead two prizes. I'm already had three prizes. <laughs> and he hasn't taken, he's only taken one prize yet. So he's only, he's only taken one prize and I've already taken three, which is really good for me. So he's going to try to set up this rock rough. Uh, I mean, he could always knock out Lele, which is the big problem, right? Is that I have this Lele down. He's going to use Beacon to get the other rock rough. And he's in, he is now in B string range. So if he can get himself a couple, of, if he gets nine tails and get himself a couple of B strings, he probably has some B strings in the hand too. So he's going to go ahead and play, play this Kakui, um, which is, I guess is good for him because if he attaches energies, he can always jet punch again, but he doesn't really want to attack with these Pokemon that aren't Ninetales, right? And then he can get B-String. And uh, he can grab one more item. He could grab... I don't know if this deck plays Counter Gain, but uh, Counter Gain would be pretty cool too, because if you're behind on prizes, your Ninetales can attack for one energy. And Counter Gain is just good in general for Ro Rockruff as well, so I think in my future Buzzwell decks, I'd probably play like two Counter Gains to attack with Ninetales and with Lycanroc. I know some people are saying they don't like the idea of playing Lycanroc, in uh he doesn't th they don't like the idea of playing Lycanroc in bus tails they'd rather play the what's it called the um custom catcher the one that if you play two of them it counts as a lysander i'm not the biggest fan of doing that personally just because like Lycanroc is a good pokemon it doesn't really matter like your bench isn't and like your but your bench isn't too cluttered uh Lycanroc gives you a different weakness and it's overall just a good attacker. Like, it's got a really strong GX attack that I wouldn't want to miss out on. So, there's another Skip Loom. I'm going to bench that, get a DC down there. So, we're going to go... We're, we're taking, like, huge, huge advantage in this game. If we have another Jump Pluff in deck, we do get another... Yeah, and there we go. Now, everything in his board gets o code. So, as long as we can find an energy the following turn, we win the game. Because we are going to take a knockout here. So, uh, we did get a really, really, really good start here. Getting pretty much three... Yeah, we got three Elms in a row. Which means that from there, <laughs> and he and because he whiffed a knockout turn one, and we got three elms uh, in a row. As long as we don't whiff our energy, whether it's grass or basic or DCE, which we have, I think we have netball and we have uh, the the um, DCE in our hand. As long as he doesn't judge us, we do get guaranteed game next turn. So that's really good. <laughs> so Lost March showing off his chops. I do think that Lost March is a little bit better than I gave it credit for. I still think it's kind of like, I still think the deck isn't as amazing. Like it's not like tier one, I don't think, but I could be wrong about that. 
it really just depends on what's good in the meta, right? Because it's still going to have a hard time dealing with Zoark. Um, and there's DC for game. So we're going to go ahead and move on to game two here. But yeah, I still think Lost March has like a hard time versus Zoark, which is really good. And uh, I mean, it kind of has, has a decent time against Blacephalon. It really just depends. Like everything is based off your start, right? So if you have to have a really good start, which is why you need you play like Lele's and you play four Elms, because you need to get that turn one Elm or like a bunch of pop-ups down turn one. Um, and then it has a really hard time versus the best deck in format, which is Malamar spread. That deck is wild. Like it's actually like, there's no chance of you beating that match. <laughs> you have no chance of you winning that match if they're playing like their Cocos and their Tinas and a bunch of one prize attackers. If they never played on Lele, you like pretty much never have a chance to win. Unless you want to tech in like Sky Pillar or Machoke, which is really hard to do. Like it's super hard to do because like 58 slots in this deck are like guaranteed to be something. And then if, they, if you play Sky Pillar, they just bump it with like their own shrine. And then, oh, we also we're also playing a one of super boost in this deck. The idea is that if we have three jump buffs down, we can work around. Um, we can work around. What's it called? Uh, we can work around. Uh, Shuckle GX because Shuckle GX is an ability that if you only have two energies. Uh, you can't you can't damage shuckle if you only have two or less energies attached so uh ideally right like super boost counts for four energies and even if it's even if it doesn't get off it still counts as a grass energy on any stage two pokemon so it still works out uh, as a basic grass more or less it just can be enhanced hammer. i think personally i'm probably going to remove it because it's an enhanced hammer target and uh, and a faba target and because there's not really a point i think because you're gonna lose the shuckle anyways like it's only a one of card and if they play down another shuckle you still lose like you just have to rely on guzmaing around and then already this deck has a hard time guzmaing around because you want to play a bunch of other supporters every turn so i'm not too sure how i feel about playing the super boost or this matchup versus shuckle in general i think you just take that hard l to shuckle personally but i don't know maybe we'll find some text maybe maybe we'll see uh but here's he's going first which is really scary for me because if he gets that beast energy uh he takes a knockout next turn. Diancy doesn't do it though. He needs to find the beast. So if he finds Lucia, uh, which is the main reason why this deck plays Lucia, is Lost March in particular, because you need the beast to take knockouts. But here I'm just considering what I want to Ultra Ball away. Um, yeah, I just I really don't want to toss out the grass, right? Because this deck plays three grass, one super boost, which essentially is four grasses and. Uh, four dcs which i up the count to four dcs personally and four natus because it's just like i hated whiffing the dcs and natu when it mattered in the first match because uh, those actually mattered <laughs> and you don't ever want to whiff your energy attachments so i did up the count to four dcs and to four natus because i didn't like running out of natus either uh, especially since like I, especially since like i don't feel like stretcher is super good so we don't need to play faba this turn which is really good for us or not faba i keep saying faba I do, we don't need to play Elm this turn. It's because like my friend just got a Flower Faba and I really want it. <laughs> we don't have to play Elm this turn uh, because we already have three hop -ips down. So we just kind of want to draw one more hop -ip if we can. If not, it's not even a big deal. We just play Lily here. And uh, maybe we can draw into a Elm off the Lily as well. But other than that, I don't really, we don't really need too much here. It might be greedy. Maybe I should get Elm or maybe I should hold on to my hand and just hope to get Elm next turn. I can just draw six here, which is a good amount of cards. And since we are playing a bunch of Elm, uh, we are playing four Elms. I was, I'm hoping that you, we can draw into a way to get it one way or another. I'm going to put that Lele back down, guys. No worries about it. I think that was just a mistake on my part. Once again, just collecting cards off the board. Uh, hey, guys, I just wanted to uh, chime in real quick and say that I did forget to put the Lele down for the rest of the game. I did leave it on my discard pile completely by accident. Of course, we do record these when it's very, we're very tired, so... Uh, these things happen so it's unfortunate i want to keep the game up because the game is kind of decent plus it gives me the whole best out of three game anyways uh i'll let you know that it never comes into play i never have a full bench and uh he never needs to take a gx knockout or anything like that it shouldn't affect any of his plays for the rest of this game but it is something i forgot so before you guys remind me i definitely did forget it's my fault um but Regardless, it's still a good game anyways. That's why I want to keep it. And usually I cut these games out if like mistakes like that happen. But because the quality of the game was decent, I do want to keep the game in. So hopefully you guys enjoy the rest of the best two out of three. It is a pretty good two out of three. And yeah, thank you. Thank you for hearing me out. Uh, I think it'll happen eventually. Hopefully. <laughs>
But yeah, we, we, just, we don't get anything else there, so we're gonna pass it up. Hmm. There's always a mistake, man. There's always gonna be a mistake. Oh yeah, yeah. So he's gonna go ahead and attach the beast. The beast is annoying because he can just take a knock out here and then just spread it up. So we only get like two hop ifs down. Um which is less than ideal, right? Because <laughs> you want to get down as many hop ifs as you possibly can. So I think maybe instead of playing Lily, I probably should have played the uh, elm just to make sure I can give myself another hop if and maybe even like a skip loom. We don't. We have two jump puffs in hand too, which is really bad. So we want to shuffle those back in while also getting a couple of jump puffs. We're just gonna loss mixer those jump puffs away, and hopefully they're not like. Um, hopefully, there's nothing in the loss zone, or there's 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 nothing in the prizes because we can only rock with two skip looms at most this game. So I have a couple of loss mixers in hand, but I don't have a draw supporter, which puts me in a really bad position here. So, hmm. yeah, we just ultra ball away the other lost mixers to get ourselves a skip loom or a lele, which gets us, I guess. Yeah, there we go. Which gives us the other two jump ups, which is good. So that puts six Pokemon in the Lost Zone. And uh, yeah, I shuffle back in the other one because I just want not to instead because I can actually take a knockout this turn. Because I think that's two, four, that's six altogether. So we are taking a knockout at least, which is not bad. And uh, yeah. And then luckily, whenever we evolve in the Skip Bloom, it does, it does do some shenanigans, which is good. It does remove the damage counters off the board, which is really good for us. So we can just retreat here manually into this and just take a knockout here because we are hitting for weakness, which is good for us. We get a Trump Beak and another Hop Hip in our hand. Hop Hip doesn't matter because we already put the other dudes in the Lost Zone. So we might just want, we're probably gonna hold on to the Hop Hip and let it, let it mix her away. But we only have one mixer left in the deck, I believe. So it's kind of awkward as well. But here comes the big boy. Ninetales is such a huge threat to us. Like he can B string now, but like unfortunately he can just attack <laughs> a lot with a uh, with nine tails and just win. Which is scary as well, because he can just do 70 30 snipe and then we can't Oko it because we're only hitting 120. Uh, and we don't have any way to hit nine tails for weakness. I'm sorry I'm so quiet guys, I'm just like, kind of like upset about the, about the uh, Lele thing, the Lele misplay I made, so I cheated, I just, I just straight up cheated this game, <laughs> I just straight up cheated, my bad, um, but it's fine, it's okay, you, you'll understand that it's fine in a couple turns, <laughs> but here, you can just Kakui here, uh, I wish like, I don't know man, I mean, there's not much he can do here. He just, I mean, there's not much different he can do here. He is making the right plays. He's attacking with Ninetales, who is like your main attacker against Lost March anyways, because it Oko's all the poke, all the Lost Marchers while doing spread damage. So he's good. He gets to set up where he gets to get rocked up here and um, he gets to take another prize. So right now I'm at four. He's going to be at four prizes himself. And then as long as he keeps putting things in range of snipe, that's going to be really good for uh, really good for him later, because that way he can take knockouts later as well. He gets his prize, I go into jump bluff, and here I'm just like, I don't know what to do. I have the Guzma, but I don't have Guzma in hand. And I, yeah, I just go ahead and put another Pokemon in the Lost Zone. I don't get anything, which is fine. Um, he's just counting them out. That's put seven, so I'm at 140 right now. So I have to put a few more in the Lost Zone, but I only have one Lost Mixer left and a couple Trump Beaks. So I have to try to get as many Trump Beaks as I can and just weaken what I can as well. In hindsight, I should have attacked with the we I have the Guzma in hand, to be fair. So if I really want to, I can knock out the Rock Ruff. Uh, without any... I, I mean, like, I'm just kind of stuck, though. I don't have any more Lele's in the deck. 
So the best I can do is goose him up a rock rough and take a knockout and hopefully the prize gets me somewhere. Uh, then he just takes another knockout next turn and then he just jet punches pretty much for game because I don't have any loss marchers on the board. And I just have, I'm on, I'm at the mercy of trying to find, uh, trying to find DCE and not to. So I do think I should play Guzma. I could also just Oranguru here, like Ultra Ball for Oranguru. Yeah, so I'm probably just gonna do that because I, I wanna get attackers. It's more important for me to get my attackers than it is for me to, uh, than it is for me to just take a knockout on a rock rough because getting a knockout on the rock rough doesn't mean much. My Rangu is a prize, which is unfortunate. Uh, very, very unfortunate. So I just ultra ball for nothing. So as you can see, just things are just going downhill for me this game because I don't have anything to do. I could grab Natu. Um, we're talking about potentially taking back the play, but I told them I didn't want to because I already did the deck search. Um, it's my fault for forgetting because even though I, I told myself, oh, my Rangu is a prize, and my, I, I remember telling him, oh man, my Rangu is our prize. I forgot about that altogether because we remember we're, we're playing this very very tired i think this is the oh yeah i remember driving all the way down here because it's an hour and a half drive for me to get here by the way guys so by the time i drive here i'm very tired and then we just start recording right away so we can get as many videos done so misplays do happen and here i remember telling him oh my ranger is a prize and i was just like oh crap i ultra vault for a ranger and i forgot their prize so uh that's my fault but i'm gonna go ahead and probably grab a not to anyways not to a Trumpy, because Trumpy I can put in the Lost Zone immediately, which would put 7 Pokemon, uh, or 8 Pokemon, which is 160, 190. I'd be 10 short. Uh, but if I grab Not to, that'd give me a potential attacker in the future. But it's another target for him, right? So I don't really want to do that. So I think I just, I don't know. It's really up in the air, right? Because I'm not taking a knockout anyway. So I feel like grabbing Not to would be better because I have a chance of top decking DCE or a way to get DCE. So in hindsight, maybe grabbing Not to is better. Because I had no way to take a knockout anyways. I'm only hitting 190. I don't have any spread damage. I don't play Shrine. So there's no benefit in really damaging this thing for more than a knockout here. So not to would have probably been better. For sure. So I just, just another mistake on my part. Which is fine. I'm flustered. I'm flustered about everything. <laughs> so yeah. We're just going to go ahead and hit this man for 190. Which is unfortunate. For sure. But... I mean, we can just top deck, right? Like, we have the power of top decking on our side. If we top deck DCE, we can always just attack with, uh, with Lele. So it's not like, the, it's not the end of the world, right? Because we can just take a knockout, assuming he doesn't play any Ace Roll or healing items of any kind. But we're just discussing here. See, we're just, I'm discussing if I even want to attack or if it's better just to retreat. So I think, yeah, I think what I'm doing here is it's better to just retreat. I guess my mindset is I could always top deck another Trumby, which would be really good. And since you already weakened this uh, this uh, jump up anyways, there's no point keeping it alive. So, okay, my other mindset is I could top deck a Trumby or like a way to get Trumby because I have I have more ways. Actually, that's not necessarily true. Uh, yeah, never mind. I was about to say I can search out Trumbeak, but I can't really search out Trumbeak. He just Guzmo's here and he puts 60 more damage there. And I'm just, that's just, I think I just kind of scoop this game up from here because I don't think there's anything I can do. Uh, but I top deck. I top deck that, so that gets me a couple Natus. I guess that was my mindset. I had more ways to top deck Natu than I did to have Trumbeak. Um, so I can just get three Natus here, but he's down to three prizes left and I'm down to four. So we haven't lost yet. It's just like a matter of can I win? I have to keep this jump bluff active to be knocked out because he can just spread damage, but I thin my deck by three, which is good. I can bench one Natu, which is not like the end of the world, I guess. And I keep the other two in my hand for Ultra Ball fodder just in case. But here he just Guzmas that and he takes double knockout. <laughs> and that's really bad for me because I didn't consider that or else I would have benched two Natus. But I just scoop this game up. So uh, as you can see, even though... Uh, there he is. Even though... Um, even though I made the mistake of not benching that Lele, I, I never had a full bench or even close to a full bench. And uh, it didn't matter in the end. So I'm going to leave this game in, even though usually when I make big mistakes like that, I cut them out because it's not, I feel like it's just not something worth up, 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 uploading. But because in the end, it didn't affect the game at all because he never knocked out Lele's. Uh, 
I think it was okay. So it definitely was a really messy game, but here, okay, so a little bit of a uh, little bit of warning in this game. The, the camera battery dies a couple of times in this game. So there's gonna be a bunch of random jumps. I'm gonna try to explain what happens in between the jumps, but this game was so good, I didn't wanna cut it out. Uh, Cause this is another one of those games where like there was a bunch of battery dying and uh, I need a new camera. Cameras are expensive though, man. They're really, they're really pricey. So uh, I'm just buying a bunch of batteries here so I can, so this doesn't happen again. But the battery dies a couple of times in this game and uh, we always pause the game, leave, let the char battery charge and then come back. So. The game is going to be in its entirety. We just have to, I just have to explain what happens in the small sections where the battery did die. But here we're going first. So game two is just a huge mess on my part. Made a bunch of misplays. Uh, do keep in mind though, this is some of our first time testing this deck. And this is my first time playing this deck since I made the changes. Because I made the changes on my own time and then I just came and it's my first time playing. Because we don't have time to so just, uh, usually when we record we don't have too much time to play just for fun. Uh, we just we just get straight to recording so we can get as many videos for you guys as possible And then we have to, you have to keep in mind that like half the videos we usually have to cut out because of battery dying or Or like overall just maybe many misplays. We didn't realize some things. So like we have to cut out a lot of games sometimes so <laughs> it, it, we, t we spend a lot of time recording and only like half the games go up is what I'm trying to say So we are we do try to record as quickly as possible We only get to do this once a week but here we go. I do start with a decently sized board. I can Ultra Ball here to get Lele to give me a couple of hop hips, which I can only get two hop hips and a skip loom because my board will be full, which is not too bad. It's just like, I don't, I don't know how I feel about it, you know? So I think I'm just gonna Ultra Ball here for hop hip instead, uh, cause I can maybe search out another hop hip and then go for Faba from there. Or Faba, I keep saying Faba Elm. I don't know why I'm saying Faba, bro. That's ridiculous. In my hand, I have, what do I have in my hand? I believe I have a Lele in hand, actually. Yeah, and I can put a Trump Beacon in the Lost Zone already. And there's one Lele in hand, so I guess I can just pass here, and hopefully he doesn't take a knockout. My, my mindset is that, like, he still needs Beast Energy to take a knockout, or Diancy Kikui. So he needs a couple of things here if he's planning on taking a knockout. And uh, both of these things are not the easiest cards to get. Now, he does play the Sia in this deck exactly for finding Beast Energy, but he also needs to find a skateboard, right? Or play Guzma. So he needs to get Guzma, uh, or, or Guzma Beast Energy, or Diancy Kikui a skateboard, right? So obviously he can't use Lucia to find the Beast Energy. Uh, he can't play Lucia and Guzma at the same time, and he can't. He needs. To, he can't play Kikui while searching hardcore for a skateboard. So he has to have a bunch of these cards in his hand already. That's my man mindset. And since he attached an energy to, um, to the to the Vulpix, which I never mind, never mind. He took that play back. That's right. Oh yeah, okay. I remember what happened in this game. He didn't want to do that. He wanted to grab. Uh, he realized his hand, and he was just like, "No, I don't want to do any of that. I just want to grab Lele here." Um, so he's gonna attach the energy to the Baby Buzzwall instead, and he's gonna uh, grab Lily here because his hand is fairly empty. I mean, whatever. Uh, he doesn't have a draw sport either, which is kind of big. And uh, he needs to draw two more cards, right? Yeah, he needs to draw two more. There we go. There we go. Cool. And he got the escape board too, uh, which means if he can get a Diancy down, it doesn't matter because he still needs Kikui. So this escape board doesn't really do too much except for weaken me. Because he can only hit 50, but with resistance heat, that's 30. So we survive because this is the 40 HP hop ups. Just to reiterate. <laughs> Just to reiterate. But once again, shout out to Nelson as always. Oh, shout outs to... Um, Heroes Collectibles as well for letting me record here, once again. Uh, now, he, this deck is playing, in his version, he is playing, I believe, one or two Baby Buzzwolves because he needs to, right? So he's doing 10 damage. <laughs> uh, because this, he said that the one thing he didn't like about the deck was when we did test it was his lack of Baby Buzzwolves. Here we can grab Skip Loom, Skip Loom, Hop Hip, which will put four more Pokemon in the Lost Zone, and we need to find a way to get out of this situation. I don't know what else is in my hand. So, oh yeah, so I'm just going to Cynthia here. All right, cool, because my hand is so dead. Um, that I don't feel like it's even worth and my mentality was I didn't want to play down two Lele's because I had a Lele in hand and I could have Ultra Ball for the other Lele to get um... Excuse me, I could have Ultra Ball for the other Lele to get both Cynthia and um, And Elm, but then that's two Lele's on board which could essentially lose me the game So I'm trying my best to not do that. Luckily, uh, we're mad skilled and we draw into both skip looms <laughs> So we do put another four Pokemon in the last one, putting us at five, and that gets us two jump bluffs on board, assuming they're both in the deck, which I should probably double check first before I do that. But yeah, look, I think they're both in the deck, so I'm not too worried about it. 
So that's five in the discard. We're hitting for a hundred. If we can attack with Natsu this turn, we take knockout. Um, so hopefully we can. Excuse me. Yeah, like the, the start wasn't amazing as you can see like that's 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 one of the downsides i see to playing lost march is that if your starts aren't amazing your your presence is like kind of meh and we're not even taking a knockout here but we don't even have any energies as well so there's that issue as you can see uh that's my that's my reasons why i think this is going to be the top of tier two because at the top of, like if you're if you're at the top of tier two it's not too bad <laughs> you just have to it's just that you're constantly relying on drawing into your combo pieces in this deck and uh you don't have the most consistent ways to get your energies and your uh fabas as early as turn two so i can bench this hop if because i have the other jump bluff in hand and i have the skip bloom in hand as well so what i could do is like drop skip bloom next turn and then shuffle draw but here i'm just chilling again uh we have Cynthia here, yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and do that instead. We're not gonna wait. We're just gonna shuffle draw now. Hope we don't draw into this jump off, uh, because I can only assume that there's one prize. Because every game there's at least one prize, right? So um, we just have to try to find our uh, skip loom again. We still have two skip looms at most in the deck, and uh, two jump offs at most in the deck. So even if we do draw into one of them, it's not gonna be the end of the world. We do have another not to, but still no energies. We have choice band, but yeah. Once again, the lack of energies is kind of big. And the fact that he stranded my uh, Lele in the active is annoying too, especially since I haven't even attached energy to attack yet. So the only thing I really can do is Guzman hope for the best. He's not playing down any GXs for me to target down either, uh, besides Lele, but Lele I'm not going to be able to Oko yet. I need to put like, what, three uh, three more Pokemon, four more Pokemon in the last zone because there's five, or three more in a choice band. Excuse me. Or actually, technically, I can have two more in a choice band. But yeah, there we go. We do have two more. So all we have to do is get a choice band and a Guzman. We take a knockout on a Lele, which is not too bad. Um, so we did manage to get three jump bluffs and two uh, not twos down. So the army is here. The army is behind Lele and Lele needs to get behind the army. So uh, <laughs> we need to make sure we get a Guzman and an energy soon. And keep that choice band in hand as well. So that'll be seven. Uh, but we don't have any energies yet. We have the choice band, and I think we have shuffle draw, but that's like the best we can do. Oh, yeah, we have Lily, so we're gonna have to play Lily. We have the Guzman in hand, we just have to draw an energy, which we did thanks to thanks to Netball. Netball getting us the basic grass energy we need. So as long as he doesn't have blower here, we should be able to take a knockout next turn, which is really good for us. But he has the blower. Oh no. <laughs> Maybe we have another choice band. That'd be cool. Uh, we don't. I don't think we do, so that kind of sucks. But it's okay because like we can knock out Diancy. I guess. I don't really know what knocking out Diancy does for us for the most part. I guess if we knock out Diancy, he does need Kukui or Beast Energy to knock out Natus. So, knocking out Diancy isn't the end of the world. The only thing is, I just want this Lele out of the active, so. We have a couple things to go off of. Uh, he can just keep attacking our Lele here over and over and over again until it gets knocked out. Or puts in, put in a range of jet punches, which is always annoying. And now he can hit me for 50. If he has Choice Band, that's like 80, which would be really bad. Because <laughs> then he could just just really just jet punch me away and take three prizes at once eventually, which is not great. But it's okay. We're surviving for now, and that's what matters. Uh, we got Counter Catcher, which is really good because we can Guzma and Counter Catcher this Buzzwell. I think I'd rather still knock out the Diancy. I mean, we can't Counter Catcher this turn, obviously. But now we finally have this. But we don't. We still don't knock out the Lele, so we're gonna have to knock out Diancy this turn, unfortunately. Which is just it's not what you want to do. You want to take these two prizes so you can get ahead. There's no way to really punish people that are ahead in prizes anymore. So at the same time, I guess putting myself out of range of boosted Sledgehammer is really good too. So if we can knock out this Diancy and then potentially knock out a a Lele the following turn or some sort of GX the following turn, that wouldn't be too bad. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and take my knockout here. We get another Elm. So now Elms are kind of dead. Another reason why I like this deck is kind of weird sometimes. Like Elms are a dead card once you set up your board for them. Because you can't search out Trumpeak with them. You can only search out essentially what's on my board besides the jump bluffs. And Elms are just like they're not the best cards mid-game. Which to be fair is not too big of a deal because they're lost mixer targets as well as ultra ball targets. But when you don't have either in your hand, you're just kind of chilling. He's gonna get Vulpix down because uh, now he knows next turn he'll be able to use Ninetales potentially, 
And you can just Guzma up the ninth, the, the Lele again. Oh yeah, here's where the cut happened. Okay, so he knocked out the, okay. So he knocked out the Lele with Guzma, right? And I played down my hop hip in hand. Uh, he attached an energy. Yeah, okay, so that's what happened. So I took a knockout the following turn on his buzz, on his baby buzz. He put another buzz on the board, attached an energy and finished off the Lele. Uh, and then his turn, he just, now that he, now that I took a prize and I put down my own hop hip, uh, he was able to uh, use, evolve his, his bench Vulpix into Ninetales. And that's what I mean. Like you guys missed a whole turn, but not too much happened. I took a prize. I, I took a prize. He took two prizes off my Lele and now he's taking another prize here because I, I was forced to put myself into a such hammer turn because I had no way to knock him out. Uh, but now we have DCs in hand and, and choice bands in hand and stuff like that. So we can actually start attacking with Natu. Um, so you guys missed one whole turn. I do apologize about that. There's nothing I can do about it. Not actually recording because the battery died. Uh, it's going to die one more time, but this time we actually catch it. So we're okay. Um, I wish my camera like made a noise when it died, like, eh, and then it actually died. That'd be really nice. Or it warned me when there was a low battery. Oh my God, dude, where is my high quality cameras, bro? Uh, all right, so we put two Pokemon in the Lost Zone here. Skip. There's no more Jump Luff in the deck. I remember. I remember thinking the Jump Luff was prized, and I should not have benched his Hopip because uh, I forgot about the Jump Luff being prized, and I just benched it to thin my hand down for li uh, Lilies. Um, I have a Stretcher here, which doesn't get me anything, uh, especially since we don't have any more Lost Mixers. But we do have enough Pokemon in the Lost Zone now to pretty much Oko anything, as you can see. I think that's ten Pokemon. Uh, I might be able to double check that. No, it's nine Pokemon, so we're one short. So we have to get a Trumpy here. Uh, should be really good for us or like another pokemon with the loss mixer that'd be good too because then we knock out everything but with a choice band we do oko everything which is not too bad but i'm gonna play down this uh not to get a dc on it i want to keep the other two not on board because that means i have three more dcs left and with all these not on the board we should continuously take knockouts right so i'm not too worried about all the other uh i'm not too worried about having a full bench because i don't have my rangu right now it's not a big deal um he can't like there's not really a way to punish me for having a full for having a lot of cards in my hand I just want to throw down cards uh, in case, like, I don't know, like a surprise judge or something. But we can little Lily here. Grab another Lost Mixer, which is good with our Stretcher. Because we can Stretcher, get a Pokemon, and then uh, Lost Mixer it up. If we have a Pokemon in the discard pile. Which I believe we do, because he's taking knockouts. We don't need to do that right now. We can do that next turn. We can also keep these Lost Mixers in case we get Dead Dross. Um, but we can just take a knockout here. So right now we're three for three. So like it's a pretty even game. But if he ever attacks with with uh, with any GX attacker, we instantly get ahead because we don't have any Lele's down our board. On our board, he already knocked out the Lele that we had. So as long as we never bench a Lele, unless it's the final turn of the game, we should win this game. He's gonna attach a choice band there just to get it out of his deck, and uh, skateboards start skating around. <laughs> and he has Guzma. He could Guzma up something. Um, but there's not really a reason to. He wants to knock out the thing with the energy. But he realizes right now that if he attacks the thing with the energy, he loses. <laughs> because he doesn't lose, but he loses two prizes, which in turn means he's going to lose. Because as long as I have more DCEs, I should be fine. He can't punish my hand. He can't get rid of cards in my hand. I don't think this deck plays Judge. It might play Judge. Uh, so if he plays Judge, I'd probably be his best play eventually. But he already has both Lele's down. I think he cut down one Lele. But here he can just... 70-30 uh, spread and hope I don't get, I hope I can't knock him out next turn He has to hope there's no more grass energies uh, I think yeah, he knocks out not to because this way he can take two more prizes next turn So this is the last turn of the game uh, right more or less right here if I don't take a knockout on this thing um, Right now with jump fluff particularly because uh, I can't do it with not to because he could win the game if I attack with not to off a of jet punch So I have to take a knockout here with not to uh, with with um, with jump fluff, so I have to find a grass energy. Uh, if I don't, then he can just jet punch for game. But here we can loss mixer because we did put that jump fluff in our hand, and the battery did die again. Okay, so what ended up happening is that we did find the thing, right? Yeah, because we took the knockout on it, and now he's getting a lichen rock to pull up the other not to. Okay, and now he's playing. Okay, now he's playing the Lycan Rock. He used Cynthia. He's playing the Lycan Rock. Uh, he pulled up the other undamaged Natsu here, and uh, because we knocked out his. Okay, and there we go. And uh, we were thinking like his only way to win here was to grab. Okay, so it was a messy game, but to just to try to explain what happened, 
he wanted to get beast energy because his only way to win the game right there was like i mentioned earlier uh we we took a knockout with jump bluff uh, so I do apologize that the game was really messy. Uh, I'm, I'm, I do understand if you guys want to watch the video, but, uh, what happened there was I ended up finding my grass energy. So I took a knockout with jump off, right? Um, uh, which was good for me. No, actually, maybe that's not what happened. No, I took a knockout with not to, I took a knockout with the damage not to, cause we did not have a grass energy. My, my mentality was if I took a knockout with the damage not to, he has to Guzma and have a beast energy or a Kikui to win. But he can't Guzma and Kikui at the same time. So he can Lycanroc. So he has to find Lycanroc, Kikui, or Guzma or Lycanroc with a beast energy. That's his only way to win. So he could have won that game because we whiffed the grass energy all together there. Um, so all he had to do was find a Kikui, which he did not get, um, or find a beast energy, which he still had in the deck. And his deck was fairly small. Uh, it was like 20, 30 cards or something like that. So he played the Lycanroc down. He pulled up the other Natu. And from there, he um, played Cynthia to try to draw the beast energy. But unfortunately, as you saw, he whiffed the beast energy. So like even in a good matchup like that, if they have their one prize attackers and you don't get like an amazing start like we did uh, in the first game, then Lost March can still lose against a lot of decks. It's really just based off how good your start is, which is why I feel like Lost March is just kind of like... It's great, but it's not like the best deck in format. You know what I mean? Uh, that's my mentality versus Lost March. That's why people always ask me like, how, why don't you like Lost March too much? And there's an example right there. Uh, obviously we won that game because my opponent got unlucky, but still, you know what I mean? But anyways, that's going to be the games guys. I did want to give you guys that rematch. I'm not able to record anything until I fix my camera, but I still wanted to get this uh, video out for you guys. So that's why it's a little bit messy. But regardless, that first game was a good example, and that second game was whatever. It, like the the misplay didn't matter. So hopefully you guys aren't freaking out. I'm not freaking out. I mean I kind of am, but I'm not freaking out. Uh, my opponent didn't freak out. You shouldn't freak out either. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like I got you guys. I got you as always. I got you. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to drop a like on this video if you haven't already. I would greatly appreciate it because you you guys know how much I appreciate it. We're almost at 5k likes. We're gonna have like a nice, hopefully a channel rehaul maybe. Maybe before, maybe after, depends on when I can get this stuff done. I'm still trying to find someone that can make me a really good channel logo. I just don't know what I want yet. People have given me ideas, but the ideas they've given me, I haven't liked too much. Uh, so if you guys have any ideas for what like a nice channel logo would look like, I want something new. Like I want something sleek, like Rare Candy just got their little channel rebrand for hitting something. I don't remember what they hit, uh, but they hit it. I think it was 10K. And uh, it, like they have a new Rare Candy logo and it's really nice looking. I like that kind of stuff, that kind of style, like really sleekness. So maybe something along the lines of that. But I just don't know what I want for my channel. <laughs> uh, but once again, shout out to the sponsors. Shout out to you guys for always liking the content. We're almost at 5k, which is so exciting. And we're about to hit big boy town. I'm pretty excited about that. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.